Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, in this corner standing at a stout 8.86 inches and a diameter of 1.75, weighing a very lean 16.8 ounces, we have the Full Nelson. Let's not forget his partner in crime standing at a mere 6.85 inches with a diameter of 1.75 inches as well, weighing in at a mere 12 ounces on the dot, the Half Nelson. Let's get ready to rumble! Hey everyone, Silencer Shop Authority brings you another set of suppressors manufactured by the ever colorful Q. Both the full and half Nelson are direct thread 5 8 by 24 30 caliber suppressors made from 100% titanium. Both are full auto rated and they will handle up to 300 Winchester Magnum. No problem. Both models are a tubeless design with baffles welded onto each other to form the can. The rear section is the serialized part and coating of choice is PVD. No user serviceable parts are inside. Exit holes a very generous 380 thousandths on both cans. The rear wrench flat is 7 eighths and the front standoff here is a 3 quarter inch. Q definitely hits a home run with marketing and packaging. My care package didn't include the cloth containers, but if you check out VSO channels review you note the wrestlers on each one of the cloths that comes with it. They do include carry cases that definitely come in handy when you take them to the range. For our host this time around we use the CZ557 UCS or Urban Counter Sniper. It's a 16 inch 308 bolt gun. Wasn't having much luck feeding it that day and because of that the magazine was returned to them for replacement. We did a two shot group with and without the full Nelson at 100 yards. We used some Malaysian 147 grain L2A2 surplus. Group size didn't change from no can to can but the point of impact was about four inches. Not really out of the norm from what I've seen before with the Phantom M2 mounted on some of my other hosts. Now here's something that may interest a lot of you. Nathan at AIM Research now rents out a sound meter for testing suppressors and other loud noises. I'll preface my numbers by saying what a lot of others have said. Comparing suppressor A to suppressor B's numbers can be misleading, especially if they're not all performed on the same day, with the same post, the same barrel length, the same ammunition, etc. Averaging the numbers is the same way too, but for our demonstration simply taking an average of the numbers presented with shots fired is an acceptable method. I could not maintain the 1.6 meter mic height safely while firing the gun, so I chose to elevate the mic 80 centimeters or 31 and a half inches above my seated area and one meter to the left of the muzzle. Okay, so shut up Matt and tell us what the numbers are. So up first we'll run a 308. This is a 16 inch with no muzzle brake on it. We're shooting some military surplus 147 grain full metal jacket. I'm going to run the bolt open and closed a couple times just so you guys get an idea how loud that is. Hopefully the wind isn't doing too much damage here from the sound. Okay, so now we'll shoot five rounds.
All right, now I have some 240 grain subsonic ammunition that we're gonna fire two rounds out of this, make sure it stabilizes in the gun, and then we get a peak reading off these as well. All right, back to our military surplus, supersonic 147 grain. Five rounds again. We have a Q, full Nelson on here. All right, now we have some of the IMI 240 grain subsonic. As I mentioned in the past, always try to check bullet stability on any of your hosts before attaching your suppressor. This original load here from IMI with the 240 grain did not stabilize out of my one in 12 twist. This CZ is a one in 10. We check stability at approximately 15 yards. We have some good clean holes there, so cross our fingers. All right, we have five rounds of military surplus, then three rounds of the 240 grain subsonic by IMI. That's all I had left. We have the half Nelson on here. I'm really digging both of these cans. The all titanium construction is keeping the weight down. Fit and finish were superb. Both threaded on and off easily. Welds look very nice. I did notice a slight pinhole on one of the welds in my sample. Not sure what that will do over time, but it did pass a pressure test, so it may just be superficial. I like the wrench flat at the rear and the standoff on the front that doubles as a hex for a socket. I didn't have any issues with color changing on the suppressor, but only 175 rounds of 308 were used between the both of them. 
on a bolt gun, so nowhere near as hot as a semi-automatic or full auto. I did use a wrench to get about an eighth of an inch turn on each suppressor after tightening it on the gun. Didn't have any issues with loosening it up. Again, slower rate of fire with a bolt gun, probably not as much jarring of the suppressor, but the threads held tight. Can I find any faults or negatives about these two units? Not really at this time. Q does offer both lengths in a QD mount system, so I can't fault these for being direct thread only. Thank you once again to Silencer Shot for providing us with the full and half Nelson. Live Q or die for life, brother.